so welcome back everyone so in the last video we had covered on how to fix the borehole specifications for a particular site so we uh, mainly we covered on the uh, you know uh, fixing the or uh, selecting the number of boreholes required the spacing to be chosen between the boreholes and and also the depth of the borehole to be taken okay and uh, this uh, video onwards this class onwards we will be covering on the different methods of subsurface exploration okay because as a geotechnical engineer who is uh, on a mission to complete the geotechnical investigation we have to know the subsurface soil profile very clearly so for that you know there are different methods of subsurface exploration so we will cover one by one all those different methods Uh, so there are different methods of subsurface exploration involved now depending upon the suitability of the site condition we will choose one of the methods okay uh, so i had already shown you the different types of subsurface exploration methods in the last video i had given you a glimpse into that so generally it can be classified as open excavation methods boring methods subsurface sounding methods and geophysical methods now <coughs> in the first three methods that is open excavation boring methods and subsurface sounding methods uh, you will be uh, taking you will be actually penetrating into the soil okay or you will have to either dig a pit or dig a bore hole to un, uh, you know to take out samples and understand the soil profile so those methods are called as direct methods because we will be um, we will be definitely uh, be uh, penetrating into the subsurface below and taking out the samples or observing the samples so that's why they are called as direct methods whereas geophysical methods are called as indirect methods because here you will not be digging into the soil at all instead what you will do is you will use um, <coughs> you know if you want to know the stratification of soil below the ground surface or the change in soil profile or the change in soil strata beneath the ground surface you will use a, a geophysical methods where um, you know you uh, you will be making use of uh, physical characteristics like wave velocity of the subsurface strata the electrical conductance so these properties or the change in these properties will help you in identifying the change in soil strata beneath the ground surface so since we are not taking any borehole or we are not digging into the soil that is why and but even after that um, uh, we are able to get the change in soil strata beneath the ground surface that is why these are called as indirect methods okay so basically in direct methods we'll have to dig into the soil to understand the soil profile but whereas in indirect methods you don't have to necessarily take a borehole or a, you don't uh, you don't have to dig into the soil to understand the change in soil strata so first we'll cover open methods of exploration now in open methods of exploration you have uh, mainly uh, you know it is uh, test or trial pits and trenches mostly uh, we'll be talking about test pits only okay and um, there are other methods also like shafts and tunnels which are which comes under open methods of exploration for the main time we'll be discussing about these two methods of exploration coming under open exploration methods so uh, basically in, uh, open methods of exploration uh, test pits or trial pits are the common methods employed at site okay and uh, normally as you can see in this picture this is how a test pit or a trial pit looks like and it is mostly uh, taken up to depths of 3 meters only because if you are going uh, because see this is dug out manually okay these test or trial pits are mostly dug out man it's a manual work which is employed so digging for a depth of more than 3 uh, meters and all will not prove to be economical uh, for us so that is why the depth of a trial pit or a test pit is mostly restricted to 3 meters itself and also since you know this is manually dug uh, there is something that we have to take care of that is you know you have to ensure that there is a clear working space provided for the workers at the bottom of the pit or basically the size you know minimum size is 1.2 meters by 1.2 meters which is to be maintained for the test pit so that you know the worker can have a clear working space and also you have to make sure that as you go deeper 
okay you have to make sure that you know there is no accumulation of dead air there and there is proper ventilation also provided at the pit so that you know the workers doesn't experience any suffocation okay so these are the things that you have to take care of while taking a test or trial pit and as you can see uh, once you take a test pit you will be able to get this vertical uh, profile of soil beneath the ground okay uh, at least up to a depth of 3 meters and you will also you can also collect um, undisturbed samples by inserting a, uh, uh, a tube sampler and all see we will study about the different types of samplers okay our uh, samplers are actually used for obtaining soil samples from beneath the ground okay and uh, so using those samplers we can obtain undisturbed samples from these trial pits okay and um, and uh, you so once you take a trial pit you will be able to have a visual inspection of the soil which is uh, present at your site and you can also collect the undisturbed undisturbed i mean samples without disturbing them much okay so we call it undisturbed samples and undisturbed samples are very important for, for us when it comes to the determination of engineering properties okay undisturbed samples are more uh, preferred so you can have a visual inspection of these soils when you take a test or a trial pit and also you will be able to obtain the soil in its natural condition itself at least up to a depth of 3 meters okay and uh, see there are uh, once you collect the sample it is important that you know you uh, immediately wrap it with the plastic uh, material uh, use some wax and all to seal both the sites uh, obviously you will have to follow all the um, precautions to be taken by transporting a sample that is another part of study we will not move into that so this is how a test or a trial pit is done at site and you can even take the engineer can even take some workers along with him and you know take a test pit or a trial pit at a site during the site visit itself so that he'll have a glimpse into the subsoil profile there during the site visit itself okay so that is also one way of checking your um, subsoil profile so uh, regarding trial pits you can just refer 18 IS 1892 1979 uh, you know refer the clause 3.3 there uh, they talk about test pits or trial pits okay so this is one of the common methods of or uh, open excavation which is employed at site to have a um, you know a brief a glimpse uh, into the subsoil profile okay at least up to a depth of three meters not more than that more than that it is definitely uneconomical for us and we can just go for taking boreholes itself now the other type of open excavation method which you have is uh, trenches now trenches are long shallow pits okay so the one advantage of taking um, long shallow pits is that um, you will not only be getting an idea about the vertical profile of soil but you will also know the horizontal extent of that or the continuation of soil profile in the horizontal direction as well or in the lateral direction as well so that is one advantage of taking a trench okay and uh, unlike a trial pit this can be uh, excavated um, you know using machines depending upon the required size and depth of the trench but whatever it may be the minimum width of the trench should be maintained at 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 meters okay and when you are taking trenches um, uh, you know if the sides are sloped or uh, and if the, if the soil at the site is more like collapsible soils or it has a chance of caving in or collapsing into the trench which you have dug out, then you have to protect the sides of that slope. Okay, or the you have to protect the side slopes of the trench in order to prevent the soil from collapsing into the trenches. Okay, so you have to take necessary measures to prevent that. Um, you know, uh, caving in of soils into the trench. Now, the same is applicable while uh, digging um, uh, a trial pit also because uh, normally um, uh, trial pit also we can take it for, um, you know, most types soils. But if there is a chance that the uh, soil will collapse, then you will have to provide necessary brazings or struttings to prevent that collapse in of soils. Okay, so um, we will be covering only these two open methods of exploration for now. So as I said, uh, you know, this you can take during site visit also just to get an idea about the subsoil profile then and there itself. Okay.
now uh, we will move into the different methods of boring so in boring methods as i said depending upon the uh, site condition we choose a particular method okay so the four different methods uh, coming under boring are auger boring wash boring percussion drilling and rotary boring or drilling so here in all these types of boring methods we will take a bore hole beneath the ground surface okay bore hole of a particular diameter will be taken to the required depth and uh, the the mechanism involved in each type of boring method is different okay and that is suitable only for certain types of soils so that is why we we have different types of boring okay because not all boring methods are suitable for all types of soils and ground conditions so one by one we'll see so today uh, we'll be covering only auger boring so auger boring we'll start with auger boring now in auger boring uh, the main uh, what do you call as the auger okay these are the two different augers which are commonly used okay we have this helical auger okay as you can see and then there is this post hole auger okay so these are the two different uh, types of augers that we normally employ uh, into the soil okay for taking the borehole and also for collecting the samples now in the case of this post hole auger also see here the sample gets collected in this space okay and in the case of helical auger if you are using a proper casing while um, um, while drilling into the ground surface drilling into the subsoil uh, if you are using this helical auger for drilling into the subsurface and along with this if you are using a casing okay then uh, you will be able to retrieve the soil sample uh, in helical auger as well okay so anyways uh, these are the two helical auger and post hole augers are the two different type, types of augers which are employed uh, for drilling into the ground okay so this is how this setup would look like you will have a handle and you have a particular type of auger whether helical auger or post hole auger attached to that uh, drill rod okay and then what you do is you will push it into the ground you start rotating it so it's simultaneous rotating and pushing into the ground by means of this handle okay see actually we have hand operated augers as well as mechanical operated augers as well so if it's hand operated augers what you normally do is you will just push it into the ground and you know start rotating it it's, it's actually simultaneous um, you know rotation and drilling into the uh, ground surface below using these augers okay and um, if um, in, if suppose your length is getting shortened while drilling into this subsurface below then you can extend the length of this drill road by attaching these extension augers okay so because if you want to go for deeper depths then you can attach extension augers as and when required so we saw the different types of augers which are used either a helical auger or a post hole auger which can be simultaneously rotated and pushed into the subsoil to get the soil samples okay so here um, what happens is that as you push it you know once it reaches a particular limit you can just retrieve this uh, auger and collect the soil sample which has uh, which has been entrapped into this auger okay so that is how and then again once you retrieve the soil sample again you push it back into the ground then you start your simultaneous rotation and pushing into the ground further okay so uh, mainly hand, hand augers can be employed only up to a depth of 6 meters beyond if you want to take if you want to uh, dig a borehole uh, for a depth more than 6 meters then you can go for mechanical augers okay and uh, as i said it's simultaneous rotation and pressing into the soil which will help in the advancement of the borehole and in between you can um, you know take the um, <coughs> you can uh, retrieve your augers back and uh, you know collect the soil samples whatever has been entrapped into that particular type of auger okay and normally this type of auger boring is um, you know 
preferable for dry and unsupported boreholes that is uh, for soils which are not susceptible to collapse into the borehole which you have caved in okay but if there is a chance that your soil is collapsible then you will have to take necessary precautions you will have to start uh, you know uh, circulating drilling mud and all uh, which which can actually uh, you know provide a proper stabilization of the borehole so that the soil will not collapse in, uh, into the borehole okay uh, so that is how you do auger pouring okay normally you will prefer uh, boreholes um, which are not susceptible to collapse that is why uh, digging out the bore, borehole and the soil um, should not collapse into the borehole then it will naturally interrupt your boring process okay but if there is a chance that you uh, you are encountering or you are drilling through collapsible soils then you will have to uh, take out this auger start pumping uh, the you know use some sort of stabilization technique mostly you can just uh, circulate the you know there is something called as the drilling mud okay uh, mostly bentonite fluid is used it's a clay so what it will do is uh, when you circulate this fluid in the borehole it will form a layer impermeable layer around the borehole so that will prevent the uh, side of the borehole from collapsing okay so this is how you do auger boring and uh, normally see uh, you can imagine that you are doing uh, you have this auger boring so normally this auger boring is preferred only in soft to stiff passive soils only in the, uh, those uh, type of soils this auger boring would prove to be uh, more uh, um, easier okay because if you are uh, trying to drill through uh, you know soils containing cobblers or boulders or some stiff or cemented soils then your process of auger boring would become difficult so the um, soil which is suitable for auger boring is mostly soft to stiff coarser soils and uh, compared to other methods of boring uh, this employs uh, comparatively you know uh, cheaper and uh, lightweight instruments okay so you will see that in the other types of boring you will have more heavier instruments so here we have cheaper instruments lightweight instruments so that is why if you want to uh, do a rapid drilling process you can go for auger boring uh, okay now so that's about auger boring so as we saw in auger boring we have actually uh, two types of augers mainly employed we have the helical auger and we have the post hole auger so you do the simultaneous rotation and pressing into the soil and um, in between you can take out this auger and uh, you know collect the soil sample which has which has been entrapped in the auger okay and then again you keep the auger back into the borehole and you keep uh, doing the simultaneous rotation and pushing into the subsoil profile up to the depth you require but one of the major disadvantages of auger boring is that you know you will not be able to know the change in soil strata uh, very um, um, perfectly okay so that is one of the disadvantages of auger boring you will not be able to identify the stratification of soil profile beneath the ground surface uh, properly and as well as you will not be able to use auger boring for very hard soils or cemented soils and also you will not be able to push this auger through soils containing cobblers or boulders or such uh, heavy rocks okay so that is uh, those are some of the disadvantages of auger boring other than that uh, you know auger boring uses very cheap and light instruments so if you want to um, use some rapid drilling process you can go for auger boring so in the next class we will take the other methods of boring so thank you